Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Patty and today's video I'm going to be discussing my diagnosis story. My story, how it started with the disease called lupus. Get something nice and warm to drink and we'll have a chat. My initial diagnosis was not lupus. Stay tuned. I have been living with lupus for 25 years. My initial diagnosis was not lupus. Later I was told that it was, but it took time to get there. And there are diagnostic criteria before they can diagnose you with lupus. And it was my senior year of high school. I was 17, like turning 18, like that phase. It was strange. First of all, I was very active in athletics as well as um, what we coined a student athletic trainer. I was always interested in medicine. I had went to the, they called the Career Tech Center. They called it Allied Health at the time because it was a class that you could take. It gave you the basic skills so that you could then further your career on, um, if you wanted to become something in the medical field. And at the time, you could then, you were being prepared to take a certification test or what was called a, a CNA or which then turned into a competen competency evaluated nursing assistant a CENA. I remember that class being early in the morning and I had a hard time getting to the class and I was falling asleep in class and that just wasn't me. I the nights before I was having a hard time. I was sleeping I was living at my mom's house and I'd wake up with muscle cramps at night. I was running myself ragged during the day, but it was a typical teenage thing. I mean, I was taking my classes, I was in the allied health program, so I was practicing to be a nursing assistant. Well, did my work study, but then after school it was football time, and I was a student athletic trainer, so we were taping ankles and icing injuries and, you know, at the games, and basically, <laughs> it was a long day, and it wasn't ideal for somebody that didn't know they were becoming ill. So I would fall asleep in class. I was waking up at night with muscle spasms, uh, and then muscle, what I would, <laughs> I would call Charlie horses. I'd literally wake up screaming and crying, scare my mom out of a dead sleep. It was just a lot of irregularities, but I kept pushing forward because it just, there was no reason for me to feel this way. I just didn't know what was going on. My teacher started noticing the teacher that was a registered nurse, she started noticing abnormalities. Um, one being my hands, um, actually, they're kind of that way now. You can see that they're um, kind of dusk at the tips. Um, but um, there was what was called a Tabor's Dictionary. It was a medical dictionary. And she brought it to me and she showed me the definition for Renan's. And she's like, I want you to take this to your doctor and show them what's going on. And the reason is it it's indicative of an autoimmune disease. So it's kind of like the first sign that, hey, there might be something that we can call this that's going on. Of course, nothing was super serious then. It's just I was really tired, everything hurt, I was swelling up. Things progressed further. My hands had swollen up so much that I couldn't make a fist. My feet had swollen up that I had a hard time getting my socks on. I had a hard time buttoning my pants or my shirts at the time. And it was really hard, especially because I was a teenager and it was my senior year of high school. And I didn't know what was going on with my body. Part of me tried to ignore it and push through, and the other part of me had no choice but to realize something was going on. Well, my, my parents had had enough and we had went to my family doctor once before and he had told me that the swelling in my hands was salt. I was eating too much salt and I had to you know, cut back on the salt in my diet. Things progressed, and so then the second time we went, I said, "Hey, my my nurse that I go to school with, she told me that I could be Renaud's." And so he's like looking at my hands, and he's like, "That's really rare. I, that's not a possibility." And so I had told him, I said, "Hey, can you get me a soda pop um, or a pop?" Because when I knew when I held things that were cold, my hands would hurt and they'd be white. And it was just a weird white. It was like a cadaver white, like a dead body white. And it was not normal. And so he was reluctant, but he did. He went and got, a, I believe it was a Diet Coke, and he handed it to me. And you could see the pallor. Now, it was very light. I, the test came back with a positive RA factor. And that 
indicative of having rheumatoid arthritis. It was really rare, especially in somebody in my age, but he was gonna try a medication and see if I felt some relief. So he actually, the first drug that I was started on was high dose aspirin. Well, I have a very sensitive stomach and I was not tolerating it. I just, and the symptoms got worse and then my stomach really hurt and I just, you know, continued to go back to the doctor and then finally my dad, my dad was just said, hey, I want her to see a specialist, you know, there's something wrong. And the doctor, he said, well, I'll send you to a rheumatologist because she has a positive RA factor, but I really don't see anything serious going on here. Symptoms progressed. So I'm a teenager, my hands are swollen, I live in northern Michigan. At the time it was fall, temperatures were dropping. I could not put my pants on because my hands were so swollen. I couldn't tie my shoes or even fit in my shoes because my feet were so swollen. I was not eating salt. Um, I hurt. The parking lot to get to this new doctor's office, the new doctor's office was in the hospital, but as you know how hospitals are, they're pretty much airports. Wherever you park and walk, you've got a lot of walking. Well, if you're not feeling well and everything hurts, it's it's a recipe for disaster. Basically, I showed up at my appointment wearing Birkenstock sandals. If you're not familiar with them, they're also known as Jesus sandals. So they've got a cork floor, um, they got white straps, they're really roomy because that's what my feet fit in. But because it was cold, I managed to get some big baggy socks on them. So I had socks with my sandals, and that's not how I dressed. And then I had running pants because it had elastic band that I could pull up and it was stretchy enough because I had gotten puffy and nothing was fitting and then I was having a hard time raising my hands and that was new and so I raising my arms not my hands um so I I put a dress shirt on believe it or not but then I had to button it up so it took me forever to get dressed get to the doctor get to the waiting room and she looks at me and she says I need you to get into a gown. Well, by that time, she had previously ordered a bunch of blood work and she knew I was really sick. Well, first of all, it took me forever to get into the gown. So they noticed that right away because they had to keep coming back because, you know, they're not going to are you ready yet? I'm like, not yet, not yet. So they finally get in there and she was looking, she was examining me and the hospital is where the, her doctor's clinic was. It was called the professional building. It was attached to the hospital. And basically she explained to me that I was a very sick young woman and that my, at the time I didn't know what any of it meant, but my blood work was off the charts and that testing needed to be done because I was so sick and she wanted to help me feel better and she needed to admit me to the hospital. So I was admitted to the hospital and they started to run tests. I had gallons and gallons of blood taken out. I had um, scans x-rays and muscle biopsy and the muscle biopsy was the main trigger basically they go in and they take a very small sampling of your muscle and they look at it under a microscopic and in, in fluorescent lighting they can see different cells and it was very inflamed and between that and my blood work they all came together and the doctor came in the room and she told me you have a disease called undifferential connective tissue disease she said now this can be something that turns into a main disease as you get older she said right now at that time i was exhibiting signs of lupus rheumatoid arthritis and scleroderma and so my diagnosis leaving the hospital was undifferential connective tissue disease. Not to make this video too long, I decided to turn this into a series and I'm gonna leave it there and I will continue off where we started. If there's any particular information you wanna know, please share it below or if you had similar situation, I love to hear stories and I love all my friends on Instagram that are battling the same disease. I will tell you it does turn into lupus and there's final diagnostics that go that way. I don't want to keep your time today. I hope you enjoyed something warm while you listen to me chatter on. And if you are dealing with lupus, I hope this helps you feel like you're not on this journey alone. I hope this video finds you well. If you or you know somebody that is suffering with this disease, or a family member of somebody that is suffering with this disease, and you would like to share my page with them to help 
I would I would appreciate that. My goal on this channel is basically sharing my life story and my life with lupus. In my former life, I am trained in the field of occupational therapy. I don't want people to think they're alone. When I was diagnosed, there was very little known about it. More people are knowing what it is. More people are coming forward that are in the spotlight, like Selena Gomez, um, Nick Cannon, and it's becoming more renowned. And I believe that's gonna help with funding, and that's gonna help us find answers. The more we can advocate for this disease, the quicker we're gonna get treatment options. All right, I hope you have a great day. And again, I hope this finds you well. Bye.